hello, hello there. As promised, guys, XFM Friday. Um, yes, couldn't do more because I've, I've been on vacation. I'm technically currently, while you're watching, on vacation. But I had to get this one done. F you know, for virtual sake, why not? I can't. I couldn't leave you guys hanging. Also, I absolutely love these, so I was excited to do it. <laughs> so, XFM, Ricky Gervais Show Series 1, Episode 12. Now. Oh boy, <laughs> these are fun. It's funny because last time I said, you know, they're a mess at this. They're like not good at it. And I, I read a comment in these days that said someone was upset um, when people say they aren't good at it because we're still listening to it so many years later and it's still really popular and stuff. But we're listening to it because it's a mess. But as what they were, what they were supposed to be, like, hosts of a radio music djs whatever you want to call it they're a mess dude no organization no nothing that's what makes it iconic and epic and absolutely hilarious and so much fun but like what they're supposed to be doing is just <laughs> it's chaos again i love it and i love chaos especially in comedy and these guys are hilarious but yeah no they're not good at this <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many viewers were actually engaged. Well, actually, they, I guess there were quite a few because everybody, every time they need someone to call in or this or they ask questions or emails and they get a ton. But I mean, as like, as a radio station goes for music, yeah, <laughs> not so much. But um, as entertainment, hell yeah, they're amazing. Anyway, I just think it's funny that somebody took it like personally. <laughs> um, because... I, I, I mean, yeah, I get your point, but you can't deny that they're a mess. Anyway, so, yeah, no, just, I'm thinking if anything to report, but honestly, not really. Like, the, the weather died down, which is great. Um, the day I have to drive down to the beach, because I'm the driver, and I'm the only driver, because I'm the only one that knows how to drive and has a license and blah, 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 so it's a lot of hours of driving, Yay, it's going to rain. <laughs> the only other time I ever drove to the beach, which is like a five-hour drive, it was also raining. But raining to, you know, when it's freaking, it's a storm and it's to the point where you can't really see 10 feet in front of you. Yeah, that was fun, especially when the roads are all just not paved properly and have potholes everywhere that are full of water, so you can't tell they're potholes. <laughs> it was a mess. So, I mean, I guess... I got practice, but goddamn, man, <laughs> the universe does not want me going to the beach. It's trying to kill me every time. But anyway, I'll let you guys know if you, well, you guys will find out if I survived or not. I mean, I'll, I'll appear the next week or not. <laughs> but uh, fingers crossed, I will. Fingers crossed, it goes well. Anyway, uh, that's enough rambling. I think. I think that, that that's an intro, right? I mean, <laughs> what more could you guys expect? Let's do it. Athlete and Westside on XFM 104.9, ah. sunny day, 19, uh, 2007. <laughs> it's going so well, wasn't it? Yeah. Going so well, but Ricky then, once again, the English language tripped you up. <laughs> the, the mouth with the tongue lips <laughs> exactly. was all over the brain and talk. <laughs> the brain and talk through the throat. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, language is his tool. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, Rick, I think we should... Do you see what I mean? They're a mess. <laughs> Do some introductions because I think it seems to me every week we kind of everyone knows who you are because you're you know the face of the moment, but uh, they forget who you know me and the K Man are. Well, with me, Steve Merchant. Hi, and the K Man, oh, who's our producer and friend. And uh, can I just say that I really look forward to this show. Oh. Like, it, you know, I, I, I get oh Same. great, we're gonna do a show, and we're gonna play some tracks we like and have a laugh. But now it's I, I'm looking forward to meeting Carl. Of course. Honestly, I come in and I see his face and I go, all right. And I'm, you know, I just, just great, like a, just a little friend. Do you mm. know what I mean? Mm. You know when a kid comes on to play with a friend, you go, oh, and they come out to play, and it's like little friends. Where it's like that with that? Carl. Yeah. 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 And yeah. if you don't see him in the week, you see, we deliberately stay away from him in the week so that he'll, you know, <laughs> be yeah. fresh to us. Yeah. It was, go on. You start off friendly, like you did today. <laughs> 
And then as soon as Steve turns up, you start getting nasty and saying things about me, little bald head. <laughs> no, I said, I, look, okay, right, listen, let me explain. Carl was making the tea, and you know those bins, the sort of like a round sort of metal Mickey type bin that you can take off the thing? Okay. I went, oh, that would make a good little helmet. It would make it look like metal Mickey because it's the same shape as his head. Sure. Right? And I put it on, and so far, so good, really. <laughs> that wasn't <problem> there. <laughs> That's just two mates having a laugh. <laughs> right. You're yeah. putting a bin on another man's head. <laughs> right. So I put it on, and the swing bit, through gravity and the angle, swung and hit him in the nose. Sure. Right? He went, ow! And I went, I said something like, it's all right. Yeah, of course, because you were being amused. <laughs> yeah, I said, it's all right, don't worry. Yeah. And he went, no, I've just washed my hair. Yeah. That annoyed me. That did annoy you. Because sure. just because there was lots of, like, shit and coffee and, and horrible... Uh, gunk on in his hair or no in <laughs> in the oh inside of the bin. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know it's not for you guys, but it's February sixteenth for me. <laughs> oh my god, this is exactly however many years ago. <laughs> uh math. Twenty one years ago. That no, twenty two Oh my god. We're already in two thousand twenty four, that's crazy. Jesus! Okay, to the day. I'm sorry, that tripped me out for a second, because I was like, that looks familiar. February 16th, that's like, that's ringing some bells. <laughs> I've heard of that before. I've heard of that date before. Anyway, sorry. In his hair or? No, in the... <laughs> like, shit and coffee and, and horrible uh, gunk. On in his hair or? No, in the, <laughs> in the inside of the bin. Sure. But what annoyed me was, he's hardly got any hair. At this point, he looks so, like Moby. Yeah, so I said... I, I took the bin off, yeah. and it, I was having a laugh, and it, I thought, you, you, you ruined my burn is what you Do you know thought? what I mean? I, I said, what's your house? I said, we could do that now in 30 seconds. Yes. And he looked at me like I was in the wrong. <laughs> I know. So really, that, that annoys Carl. me about him. I know. Him. That doesn't annoy yeah. me about him. Um, but otherwise, he's like, he's like childlike. Yeah, you know, in so he's many great. He doesn't understand that he's hurting your emotions and your yeah. feelings. Yeah, but, but also, right, we were playing football. I said, come on, play football. Right, and so we were playing Was that football. just in the office, or...? Yeah, just in right, the office yeah. before he came, right? right. And um, we were sort of kicking it back and forth, and I started kicking it a bit hard. And, uh, but he was quite good. I, I said, I said, this is great, right? And, uh, we finished anyway, because we thought we'd break some up. And, um, I went, I bet you were quite good at football, weren't you? And I actually thought, I thought he looked like quite a natural, you know, I thought he'd be good, he's from the north, and I thought he, that's all he'd have. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> exactly. Right. And he went, I said, uh, I suppose you're quite good at football, and he turned the quickest flash, I went, I've scored once, <laughs> right? He said, and that's because I was being chased by a bee. <laughs> <laughs> Save it. Yeah. He went, no, I said, please, please save it, because I want to tell Steve that. Now, you can continue now. Please tell us the rest of the story. You've scored a goal once well, because stopped. you've been chased by a bee. Yeah, you've done it now, really. I was on the, uh... There must be more the, to that story, <laughs> amen. I was in the school team. I wasn't that good as a kid at football, to right. be honest. Um, <laughs> mainly down to, I think it's because my dad, my dad wasn't into football. Right. And I think that's the way it works, and if your dad's into it, mm. then no. you could be a footballer when you're older. Sure. Yeah. Because sure. you're into it. And, um... So I was in the school team because I got on with the other lads. Uh -huh. and let, they let me in the team. Popular guy, yeah. Sure. And um, yeah, I was stood there doing nothing because I didn't really know what to do. I didn't. I never knew which way I was meant to be shooting. Yep. Yeah. I uh, got all that messed up. Yeah. That is and a I just stood there, right, and uh, with my hands behind my back, <laughs> and uh, something landed on me on like this part of my thumb. You got. You can't just point. It's radio. It's this bit here. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm still pointing. Yeah. And I thought, oh, what's that? <laughs> and I looked down and there's a bee. Oh, it, was a bee yeah. it was a bee on me. So I start running, yeah. try to get away from it. <laughs> and bees, actually something interesting about bees, more chance of getting stung by a bee in windy weather than any other sort of weather. That's incredible. Uh, anyway, so I'm running. I've heard that before. Whilst bees will not go out of their way to sting you, in the following weather is forecast. If the following weather is forecast, the chances are more likely. Thunderstorms, incoming low pressure systems dropped to below seasonal temperatures. <laughs> um... I've heard that before. I've heard that before. And, you know, if 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 you're going to freak out about it not stinging you, that's more likely when you get sting. That's what they say. But the three times I've been stung by a bee in my life, I noticed because it hurt, I went out, I looked down, and I saw the bee. <laughs> so I was just minding my own business. And I don't know. I guess I, I'm very... I'm very threatening to a bee or something. I don't know if, if what it is. Uh, first time, actually. I was about six. I stepped on one. Oops. I was barefoot. I was by the pool, and I stepped on it. That hurt. 
That one, that one had like, I get it, okay? I stepped on you, it's fine, you put your butt up, we're good. I mean, I'm sorry, my bad, you were in your right to defend yourself and stuff, it's fine. That one's like truce, okay? I get it. But the other two, I was just like, chilling. And they decided, you know what? Screw Mandy. <laughs> so, and it wasn't windy or anything, it was like beautiful day. So... I just think, you know, maybe bees suck sometimes. Sorry. Running away. <laughs> and he said there was no more. Sorry, what? In windy weather than any other sort of weather. That's incredible. Uh, anyway, so I'm running away. <laughs> and he said there was no the more. Snort. It's extraordinary. I've already learned so many, many things. You're being chased by the bees. So windy. I'm running. It's on your thumb. Is it still on your thumb now? It's sort of gripping onto me like a stag. <laughs> <laughs> like a I love his. Oh, a bee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm running, and I, I, I'm running towards, like, the goal. Yeah. Oh, God. And the ball comes to me. Yes. Wallop. Get it in. Brilliant. What happened to the bee there? Did it sting you? They die, don't they? I mean, ultimately, it died short, but did at that particular moment, <laughs> oh, it sting you? No, this was probably about 20 years ago, so I imagine... No, no, no. Once a bee stings you, So did it sting you? Yeah, but did it sting you? Down. Yeah. Ah. Right, that was the question. When did it sting you? When I was playing football. No! <laughs> Carl, do you want me asking? You say you're on the school football so team. Cute. Was there just eleven boys at your school? Listen, listen, That's Carl. An excellent question. Oh, what I mean is, at what point in this story did the bee sting you? Uh, straight away After or half time? <laughs> <laughs> Play a record. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> love how ready he is when they say play a record, he just does it immediately. He doesn't think twice about it, he's just like, fine, screw it. <laughs> oh my god, how can you not love him? He's amazing. Oh, Jesus Christ. Depeche Mode, I feel loved, on XFM 104.9. It's about 17 minutes past one on this Saturday. Go on. We're never interrupt me when it's going that well. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. Of. That was about. That was my record. That was about four or five sentences. True, true. They I don't had know what I was semantic thinking. syntax. There was there was capital letters, full stops, yeah. grammar. You everything. didn't even get the time out, did you? What Why? time was it? Quick, what time was it? I interrupted. Sorry, minutes I should fast. I'm so eager. One, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Smirch. Merchant. Smirch. And the K-Man. The K-Man. We're all giving ourselves nicknames now. Yeah. Can I just clear something up? Just, this is only a very, very personal thing. Um, lots of people who listen to the show that I've spoken to, friends of friends and stuff, they think that I'm the guy that plays Gareth in The Office, because my voice is obviously very similar. It couldn't be further than the truth. It's, it's, I'm so, that's so not the case. If anyone's listening, they could be further than the truth. It I don't like want to take credit playing. for Mackenzie's performance. That's a guy called Mackenzie Crook. Yeah. He's a brilliant actor. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's seen his performance. Oh, it's not me. That's a guy called Mackenzie Crook. I thought you... I thought what, that's what the, that character's- what was he, like the Ogle Man or something? The Augie? The Augie Bond? The Og Monster, something like that. <laughs> and since you put that up, I was like, well, duh. But, okay, Gareth. No, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> he looks so weird without his glasses. Something's missing on his face without his glasses. So not the- obviously very similar. It could <gasps> be further than the truth. This, this, I'm so- that's so not the case. If anyone's listening, they could think be it's further me. Than the truth. It I don't like want to take credit playing. for Mackenzie's performance. That's a guy called Mackenzie yeah. Crook. He's a brilliant actor. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's seen his performance. It's not me. Admittedly, he has loosely based his accent for the character on my accent, because obviously it's a comical accent. We all admit that. Yeah. We'll agree with that. But it's that's it. That's where the similarity so ends. Yeah. Mackenzie's right? a good looking fellow, isn't he? He's a good looking lad. I mean, that's not a- that's not you're not missing me. I know because no. you're saying I'm a good-looking guy as well. You're just you're... saying we're two differently good-looking guys. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Carl, yeah. it's all people are all different looks. I mean, you could say Brad Pitt's good-looking, and then you could say George Clooney's good-looking, and they're both great-looking blokes. They don't look alike. Exactly. So for me to say um, Steve and Mackenzie aren't alike, Mackenzie's a good-looking fella. Exactly. You, you know, just the, if you look at the Venn guy, guy around there, they weren't mutually exclusive. There would be a crossover of good-lookingness. Yeah. And I'm in that pool with Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Wow. Well, it's quite a big pool, Rick, and I'm in there, certainly with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm in one of those Venn diagram circles. You are, yeah. You're over this one. What do you want in there? That's, I noticed that's a separate one, floating off from all the others. Yeah, lizards and parrots. Ah, right. Okay, right. so... It's good to be included in something, though. It's good to be part of a gang, Carl. That's very important. <laughs> yeah. Only yeah. that's cleared up. Depeche Mode good. there, and I feel loved. Who would have thought Depeche Mode would have been that huge? I think I think I've seen a little lads from... Basildon with little mm. plinky plonky sound. I thought that'd be, it. They'd be like Visage or something. Mm. That'd be it. And now they're stadium 
rock fillers. They're yeah. huge. Like they conquered America. He went through some hard times. He came with the other end. Well done. But see, I think this very, what you just <laughs> said there is a very good example of why they are and, what, and why certain other bands aren't. Because if you think about it, for me, you see, whenever I think of a band name, if I see a new band's come along or whatever, I always use a very simple test, which is, can you imagine that you're the announcer at a huge event, maybe it's like broadcasting around the world like Live Aid or Nelson something. Nelson Mandela Or concert. it's a Nelson Mandela Freedom concert. Yeah. And you can imagine someone He's there. Like, He's there. And Nelson's there. Yeah, with the there. Spice Girls. Oh, they're all there, there. But you can imagine someone saying, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Depeche Mode. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Ladies the Rolling Stones. The Ho! Exactly. But you can imagine someone saying, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Visage. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome our headline act? Welcome Idlewild! <laughs> exactly. It ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Ned's Atomic Dustbin! <laughs> Okay, okay, there we go. You just now know that we'll never learn. Some bands aren't going to make it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mega City 4. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so just it's a simple test. The only thing there that, like, I, I get it is the Ned's Bin thing, because everything else, I mean, band names are so out there sometimes. Oh, especially in Argentina. In Argentina, like, translated just directly translated some of the more more famous ones you have tree you have little tree you have grandpa's pills you have lice you have the little guys <laughs> <laughs> oh, i don't know you have um little ricotta uh no ricotta uh, what's that? What do you guys call that? What do you guys call it? Little Cottage Cheese Balls. You have the balls. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, funkier ones. So, I mean, I get your point, but I don't get your point, sir. <laughs> also, I get your point, but I don't feel like they made it properly. <laughs> We'd like you to do that. At if home. you're thinking of if you're thinking of uh, starting a band or you've just named your band, you're yeah. just beginning. Just tell, phone in, tell us or email in, tell us what your yeah. band name is, and we, and we will use that simple and test. And we will do the test, ladies and gentlemen. Will you please welcome to the stage the Frank and Walters? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Eat World. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Cooper Temple Claws. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen for those lads. <laughs> it is a good it's one. It's a simple test, anyway. But uh, hundred reasons, please welcome to the stage. Hundred reasons. Hundred reasons, I think would work quite well. There you go. Nice little segue. Give me email address: Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. All right. Ah, I'm gonna get copyrighted again. I got copyrighted last time for the Who intro. They were like just talking about it, and I, I got copyrighted for like five seconds. <laughs> okay. Hundred reasons, if I could. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage Pop Will Eat Itself. <laughs> Come on, yeah, you got like a, a sound one. effect or something of like we're getting the atmosphere. Cheering. We're going to test. Cheering. We'll seek it out with. Have you got something there? Have a look on there. I'll just I'm just looking in the NME. Uh, for the kind of forthcoming gigs of the smaller known bands, and uh, it might be a useful place to uh, just begin the. Uh, Ladies test. and gentlemen, peoples around the world, will you please welcome to the stage Chumba Awamba? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got something? Have you got one? Nice, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage the Parkinsons? <laughs> They're playing in Leicester this week, uh, so uh, I look forward to that. That's a good plug, isn't it? Uh, let me see who else. If, if anyone wants to pop down to Leicester to see the Parkinson's, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Cycle Fly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, oh, there's, a, there's a genuine one here. This is someone that Simon's uh, emailed, and he says, uh, "Will you just test this name for us, okay, Carl? If you can, there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage, Coach." <laughs> <laughs> not utterly convinced. No. It's not too bad. It's not too I'm bad. worried about the sound effect. We, stra we start to sound like Chris Moyles or something. When Moyles, he, well, he's a top broadcaster. Everyone loves him. Losing weight as well. He is hilarious. <laughs> funny, funny man. <laughs> just there's one more coming here. I'll just check this one. Ladies and gentlemen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome, this is Chris Knotsford, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, meanwhile back in communist Russia. <laughs> is that a band? I assume so. I assume it's his band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, how does he listen to us in, uh, hold on now, this is only local radio, how does he listen to us in Oxford? Well, if only there was some kind of digital format that he could listen via the web net. <laughs> what is well, it? What is the, uh, what? what is the it? Web net. What? How does he listen in Oxford? <laughs> I, I currently just saw the, the IT crowd episode where... <laughs> There's the internet box. Maybe he borrowed the internet box. I absolutely love that. That was freaking hilarious. <sighs> you can listen on Sky Digital. Go on. Channel 864. Lovely. 864. Yeah. And, um, on the, on the web. Yeah. Okay. What would that web address be? xfm.co.uk. Sure. Click on the audio. Yep. And uh, you get you get XFM 10 seconds behind. It okay. actually happened. Perfect. Uh, just, just uh, of interest, what's the point of saying that they, if they can't sort of get us in London to listen to that because <laughs> they won't be, and they're, they're either, they're already, they're either in London, so they won't go through this nonsense, or they're in Leicester and they can't hear us saying Sky Digital. Yeah, we haven't thought that through at all. And because you might work in London for a bit and then have a Go back and spread the word. And like, leave. Yeah. Go back and spread the word disciples. Move back to Leicester. Yeah. Tell your mates. Yeah. yeah. That, that's exactly what I would say. It's it's a, a word of mouth kind of thing, you know? Oh, my God, I love this show. You need to hear it. Oh, I don't get it. Oh, but you can watch it on the internet. Watch it is wrong word, but totally. I mean, hello. But soon, any number of soon, XFM is the most listened to radio station in Britain. Yeah. Mm. yeah. What we need is uh, people on Radio 2 to give it a plug every day. <laughs> That'd be ideal. Yeah, yeah, or Radio 1. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any of the big rivals. Virgin. Yeah. I mean, we've often plugged Virgin. It's a good station. 105.8. Virgin Radio London. It's a great station. Really good station. Part 106.2. <laughs> Lovely. You're listening to Magic 105.4. Are you getting you're getting quite a lot of voiceover work now, aren't you? I am. Yeah. That's not. I've stopped all that though. Have you? Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. No, it's all right. It's yeah. good. Well, you know, I've, you know, I'm, I'm all right now. I've got yeah. a bit of money. Classic '60s bands. I've just suddenly, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage the Scaffold? Oh, the Scaffold. Do you remember the Scaffold? Card? You picked yeah. the, the lead singer. Looks a bit like him, but you know his brother. Not bad. That is in the Scaffold, don't you? Mike McGear. Do you know his brother? That is. What? Do you remember the scaffold? scaffold? They did, uh, yeah, we'll the drink a drink a drink to Lily the Pink the Pink the Pink. You know what he looks like? Uh, I can't remember the actor's name, but the actor that plays D'Artagnan in The Man in the Iron Mask. He's got like the same, just a lot of facial features look similar to me anyway. We'll drink is the fourth what? must Do you remember the scaffold? They did, uh, yeah, we'll the drink a drink a drink to Lily the Pink the Pink the Pink the Pink. The human race. Yeah, thank you very much for the entry. Do you know whose brother that is? Whose brother? The lead singer? No, the Mike McGear in it. The sort of one of the main men in it. Yeah, He's one of the songwriters in uh, no, the Scaffold. No. Paul McCartney. You're Is joking. he? Yeah. I didn't realise that. Huh? Yeah, that's Paul McCartney's brother. Think, think, think of that when they go in for Christmas. Think the thing. <laughs> so I think Lily the Pink was what about 1970? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was number one, wasn't it? Christmas yeah, number one. Yeah, big number one. Yeah, I might know if it was Christmas number one. Two Little Boys was 1969. Last no, it definitely was number one. Yeah, scaffold, but I don't know if it was the scaffold one. It was, it yeah. was, it was, because yeah. I remember it was, I did it in Really? Months, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they go home at Christmas, and <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. McCartney goes, All right, boys, how are, how are you, Paul? How are you doing? Oh, I'm just starting a new band called Wings. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, this is Linda. All right, don't forget, sit down. Mike, what are you doing? Just had a number one. Brilliant. Round of applause. How many number ones do you have, Paul? Uh, 19. Still. We know what we like, don't we? We all drink, 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 The human race. Paul goes, wow, if you want to. The long and winding. Boring. Oh, we'll oh. drink a drink a wow. drink. A drink. <laughs> Linda, do you want to be in uh, the scaffold? We're probably going to go on tour and stuff. I know you love it. Well, oh, I quite like it. Yeah, no, we'll oh, drink a oh, drink a oh, drink a oh, drink a oh, drink. Oh, drink. Oh, gonna, you're not going to be in Wings if you're going to play with him. Well, I got you know make a tricky decision. I mean, that's no, a great song. Everyone's doing, loving it. It's Christmas number one. What are you doing eating his bacon? Well, I love you it. Don't eat, you don't eat bacon. Yeah, but I love the music. He's, I mean, what? he's a great Stop guy. Stop it! What are you doing? Well, I just you know I love the music. We'll drink a drink a drink to the pink the pink. No, no, you don't. Yesterday. All my troubles seem so. Oh, shut Thank you very much for the. Game <laughs> <laughs> three, Iron. <laughs> oh, that. Imagine that, because imagine how different going, well, you've had 19 number ones. I mean, oh, you know, it can be very tight. Yeah, if you yeah. stay like this with a yeah. scaffold, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to rule the 70s. <laughs> yeah. If things that carry on going like they're going now, <laughs> the scaffold. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> will you please welcome, welcome to the stage, Beck. Oh, nice one. All right.
Dandy Warhols. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Dandy Warhols. There you are, it's, not, it's never gonna That happen. sounds like levellers crossed with w wonder <laughs> stuff. Rubbish, isn't it, really? I mean, well, you know, it's fine, it's chirpy. It's a nice it's, old song, but it's, it's, you know, it's not... It's that thing of it's just not essential. You I just can't love don't it. really need it in your life. You, if it never if it never occurred, you wouldn't mind. Yeah. You know. See you know what Carl just said? Go on. Were you listening? Please. Not really. He looked out the window and he looked at me and he was looking at me and I looked over at him and he said, See, now's that that's that would be good to die now. No like, what? He went that weather, that would be good to die. Oh I, today. The weather today <laughs> perfect day to die. Oh, wait, no. Was it a good day to die when it's raining? I can't remember now. It's a nice day, right? Like, it sucked to die in the rain? Yeah, because that was, like, the last moment. Yeah, 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 okay. Today's a perfect day to die. I think it's, like, 26 degrees or something. Which, 27. Which, I no clouds, no nothing. Just gorgeous. And, um... I know some of you are going to be like, that's extremely hot or whatever. Nah, for here, it's... Beautiful death weather. Sort of what? He went, old age. Yeah. Uh, What's going on up there? He's a philosopher, Rick. He is, He's on he? a different plane no, to us. I say it like that. The other week, I came in when it was really miserable, and I said to you, God, can you imagine dying today? Yeah. Because Whereas today you feel it would be a much better day to die because it's bright. You know, the curtains open, sun sure. shining. It's like... I mean, you'd still be a bit angsty about the dying thing, wouldn't you? I mean, I don't suppose that would be alleviated. If it's a nice yeah. day? <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> yeah, hopefully we'll on. still be broadcasting, you know, when one of us reaches that happy moment and we can, um, we can check. Yeah. It's got quite a lot of emails, Rick, coming in about, uh, band names. I think a lot of people are going wrong for a simple reason. They Do you guys think, you know how we, I have, there's a lot of people that listen to these constantly, especially since there's so many episodes. They just, they've heard them on repeat for years and they just love them and some people fall asleep to them and stuff. Do you think any of these three ever listen back to these? Just like reminiscing. I mean, it's 20 years later, 22 years later. God damn it, I cannot get that right. But whatever. 20 ish years later. I mean, I don't know. That'd be trippy. That would. I, I just. It's, I'm curious. Like, me, for example, for the love of God, I would never watch back my videos from, like, six years ago when I started. Oh, no, that's embarrassing. <laughs> that's awful. And it's embarrassing that they're still there. Uh, I'd rather them not be, but whatever. It's fine. But just, I, it, it, since this is three people, like, friendship and all that, I, it's just very interesting that they have this. Just... I'd say normal conversations, but they're not really normal. But just them living like day to day, and it's just interesting that there's a record of that. And it's so easily accessible. It's on YouTube, it's on, I imagine, like you can find it anywhere. So that's just so weird to have. Can you imagine having recorded just, oh, I'm gonna Google, you know, my conversation with my best two friends from 20 years ago. That's just weird, I don't know. Would you look it up? I wouldn't. <laughs> That'd be embarrassing. <laughs> think it's funny to have an ironic band name yeah they think it's a bit comical and i yeah. just don't think there's any great bands that have had a comical name that have made it into what stadium was that, filling what was that band where's me jumper what that's a band. i don't know what they were called i mean the obvious example of one that that was never going to make it Splo internationally splodgeness abounds <laughs> splodgeness abounds no i like that Splo no. splodgeness abounds Splo I'm sorry but didn't this didn't they just like break this theory with chumba wumba I mean, how more ridiculous can you get? And at least with that one song, they were huge. I I'm pretty sure they were worldwide. They were great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Car to the Unstoppable Sex Machine. <laughs> USM. These are some of the ones we've had emailed in. These are bands, obviously, that haven't ma made it so far, and I don't think they will. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, The Lazy Birds. Nope. No. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, The Paper Clips. That's not a real band. That's what is it? someone sent in. I remember, yeah, but no band name is weirder than the others, and also you grow into it. I mean, the, the, the Stones and the Beatles are iconic because they are iconic bands. What you think you'll grow into? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Shuttle Rock. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Treehouse Casino. I like it. I don't think they're gonna. <laughs> That's just made up. There's Tokyo Hotel, which isn't really funny, but Treehouse Casino, Tokyo Hotel, Potato Potato, and they went worldwide.
Well, possibly. Well, they all are, but they all obviously. Are. But my point is, people say there's yeah. no logic to band names, but if you think of a band name like the Smiths, Great. that's genius. It, is, it yeah. sums up everything that band is about. Yeah. You know, the kind of they're, they're capturing that mediocre world of grim up northness. You know, my favourite Sonic Youth. Sonic Youth is genius. Nirvana. These are these are incredible names, band names. So yeah. there is some logic to it. Yeah. I genuinely Sonic believe it's not just arbitrary words. What about the madness? Cure. The Mad Cure. Madness sounds rubbish, well, but they're good, aren't they? Yeah, but again, they're, they're never going to be. They were never going to be world beaters. But they were a comical band, essentially. Yeah, they, they were, were a knees up party band. Yeah. Madness is fine for that. But they had some great songs as well. And it, 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 but it did, then, it, then it sort of turned it all. Cause then I mean, Rick, I don't know how many members. Not Home Today is a great song. And this, a is, song. this is from an email. I don't know how many members of the band there are in Chimney Factory. <laughs> <laughs> but which. <laughs> if there's five people, who decided? Have they all agreed? Yeah, that's a great. That's the best name you know we've ever decided. With. Del. Right. Well, he, he started the band and they yeah. rehearsed around his house. So Dale went, look, it's called Chimney Factory because yeah. my granny's were They go, all right, Dale, but it's not. I've got some other. But no, yeah. it's called Chimney Factory. I've got, I own the van and the amps. There's paper clips gone. There's a band in Leicester <laughs> called Paper Clips. We can't. Do, you know, we we'll just argue over yeah. that forever. Yeah. And anyway, just all I'm saying is think before you name your band, all right? Because it's never going to happen if you've got a comical band. There was a feminist band called Clitoris All Sorts, <laughs> which right. is quite good. Isn't yeah, it? But you laugh and then you just think. Oh. Yeah. You know, I'm never gonna have that on my t-shirt. What was a little rusty? Which right. is quite good, isn't yeah, it? You oh. laugh, and then you just think, oh. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I'm never gonna have that on my t-shirt. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> it's us all sorts. <laughs> it's That's that time one. of the day now, talking of that. Yep. Um, Song for the Lovers. Sure, it's beautiful. Now, Steve, uh, I mean, I will play great old tunes to the cows come in. We've got, yes. we got to give them a little bit of Dandy Warhols and Air and Athlete. I know that, and they're mm. great, they're good, right? But. Um, I wanted to play a Cat Stevens song, but I thought I'd better not, because I've, you know, played that a little bit. And we quite like resurrecting old reputations, don't we? People like Alton John, who are, had bad faces, or David Bowie. And, People whose know. names now are largely Ow. laughed at in yeah. uh, the, the... Is that how that's pronounced? David Bowie? I've always said David Bowie. Yeah, rock or other people might not have Although I can't really take the way these three pronounce stuff to, to, to heart because I've heard some bizarre stuff from them. She did. I thought Cassie was a little I, I, I guess I gotta find like an interview or something of David Bowie saying his own name. And that's what I'll use as the criteria to say, okay, that's how it's said. Rod Stewart, I thought. Was well, he Rod Stewart? Many people now are thinking of the leopard hot pants yeah. and the ludicrous yeah, hair. Yeah, think thinking... I'm sexy and all those sort of awful stadium sort of disco things. But he wrote beautiful tracks from Maggie May through And I thought, hold on, two birds with one stone. What about a Rod Stewart song written by Cat Stevens? Wow. Is there such a thing? The first cut is the deepest. Let's hear it, Rick. On this album as well is The Killing of George. Georgie part one and two, remember? About the gay bloke, Georgie boy was gay, I guess. His favourite song, Carl's right. favourite song, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, I was going, oh yeah, I remember that, yeah. I said about, um, and I said, uh, did not intend to take his life, he just pushed it when he, he gets mugged and killed. Do you know what he said? Dude, just, are, you, are you singing it or are you telling it? Can you please decide? <laughs> I was singing mugged and killed. Do you know what he said? I was, just, I was singing, I was singing, I'm taking the bit. He went, well, I said, as I said, they go out too late. <laughs> <laughs> they go out too yeah. late. He meant gay people go out too late. He went, no, they do. I went, what do you mean? He said, well, they're always out. They go out when people are coming home. He said, if he'd have been in bed by ten, he'd still be alive today. <laughs> That's a sober um, lesson. And he went, gone. there's one that works here and he's shattered every Monday. <laughs> 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 oh, if you're gay and you're listening, just be in bed earlier. Go yeah. out when sensible people go out. Yeah. You're right, we're not on the continent, Carl. If, if, you, if you're gay and you're not in bed by ten, go home. Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> I love him. It sounds like the very How I Met Your Mother thing where Ted's mom always says that nothing good ever happens after 2 a.m. I disagree. I like, I get the logic and stuff, but I disagree, but I get it. <laughs> I'm torn, obviously. In bed by 10, go home. Yeah. I don't get it. First cut is the deepest, Rod Stewart. <laughs> 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 Don't be lying. It's a thing. <laughs> 104.9, 5 to 2. Absolutely. Ricky Gervais. Gervais. With me, Steve, Steve Merchant. Merchant. Smirch. Smirch. The Smirch. The Smirch. And the K Man. KP, Carl Pilkington, the K Man. Pressing the buttons. Yeah. See that in Heat this week? What was it? About the 
campaign to stop Carl going back to Manchester. You know, because he's a miserable sort of northerner who goes, London's crap, and I want to go back up north. Yeah. And I, I, I only need 40 quid a week to live up there, like King, and all that sort of <laughs> yes. rubbish. Right? Well, uh, um, uh, Boyd from Heat, um, well, we met him at the, um, that award ceremony. Oh, yeah. And uh, we were saying about, oh, yeah, he really enjoys Carl. Like, he's getting a lot of, a lot oh, of people, people like him, Carl. People and I was going, oh, yeah, but he's thinking of leaving. He's going, oh, st start a campaign. And he did, and he put it in there. So the campaign, so write in if you oh. like Carl. If, if, if you think he's really annoying, then we'll stop talking to him. Yeah. But, I mean, I like him. I love him. Yeah. Have you ever read the, uh, White Man, the White Van Man column in The Sun, Carl? Seen it, Are you yeah. familiar with this? This is where every day in The Sun... I heard this before. They, they spoke about this before, and I laughed because he, he, uh, he always says it backwards. Is a stereotype used in the United Kingdom for a smaller size commercial van driver, typically perceived as a selfish, inconsiderate driver who is often aggressive. Ah, I know those. According to the stereotype, the white van man is typically an independent tradesperson, such as a builder, plumber, or locksmith, self employed, or running a small enterprise. Gotcha. Thank you. I, I was just, <laughs> I was just thinking of drivers that I know that are like that. All right. And they interview a guy who drives a, a van, a white van, just you know, in order to get the kind of voice of the man on the street in the paper. Mm -hmm. And he has to answer, uh, or just give his opinions really on uh, events that have made the news each week. Just thought we could maybe throw some of these at you, Carl, because we know you to see what your, your views are. Yeah. So um, just the first thing that comes to your mind, the sort of your initial reaction to it's each of these. Top uh, all these, but you don't need to know about them. It's just your philosophy on it. Yeah, so just your views. You know. Yeah. I have um, had a few days off this week, remember? So I don't know what's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I mean, you stayed in London, though, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you didn't bury yourself, <laughs> yeah. did you? I normally see the news, but I didn't. This okay. Week. Um, so, what your view? What was your view on Will Young beating Gareth Gates in the final of Pop Idol? Oh right, don't talk like about him. It. Do you know what I was thinking about when I was watching it all the way through? Yeah. How he looks like he's got a wire coat anger in his gob. That sort of. Right. Again, it's radio, Carl. Radio. It's a great face. It's a funny face you're pulling. Doesn't yeah, you, and, you know, but you know, radio. <laughs> and it's that's, that's a problem for you, is it? And, and just the way he's from a really rich. I'm confused what his gob is. His mouth? Oh man, I would have loved to see the Carl, the face Carl was pulling. His family. That's, that's a problem for you, is it? And, and just the way he's from a really rich family. I mm -hmm. opened up the paper on the on the Monday or something, and it had like how he went to a posh school and he's got loads of money already. Yeah. It's just a bit. Key. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. What's okay. the second All question? Right. Um, there have been huge rises in street crime, especially muggings and carjackings. What's your view there? More youth clubs are needed, aren't they? <laughs> you think more youth clubs? <laughs> I like that. No, I can't. No, I like that because it's so 1950s. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like you want a bobby on the beat that clip yeah. you around the ear. So once they come Is out it... of national service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. And, and if you find someone smoking a wood bomb, you make them smoke 50. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is great. That is great. Did, did you did you used to go to uh, youth? Dude, but he has a point. I have heard countless stories of people that you know come from rough neighborhoods or rough crowds or rough friend groups or whatever and they managed to stay out of trouble because they found something at like their recreational center like boxing or they got into you know gymnastics or they got into something to like focus their time and energy on which kept them away from you know bad company and bad friends and they didn't do bad stuff <laughs> they just focus on that and some of them even ended up being in like you know great careers like the diaz brothers comes to mind those guys used to live in stockton and they just focused on but they found boxing focused on that and that kind of saved them from the the typical stockton lifestyle so i mean i get it but he has a point like they're so quick to just shut him down and call him an idiot but he makes interesting points Clubs. Yeah. It's great. Did, did you did you used to go to uh, youth clubs? Yeah. And they, they kept you out of trouble? Uh, you used to get into a fight afterwards when sure. you came out. But for the sort of hour and a half you were right. there. You had a bit of pool and some boxing and yeah. a bit of pop. Yeah. <laughs> so I, more, more youth clubs, that's good. I love him. Um, I love him. I if you're at like, home, j just uh, make notes, because this is brilliant stuff. Honestly, you won't hear more honest, from the heart exactly stuff opinions. than this. This is great. Go on. This is not pre-planned. These are your direct responses now. Oh, I, pr I promise you, Carl did not know what we were going to do. He never knows what we're going to do, and he always answers honestly. That is the beauty of Carl. What is it's your not view? an act. What is your view, Carl, on New York's former mayor becoming Sir Rudy Giuliani? Sir Rudy Giuliani. Is he happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he appears to be pleased with it. Let it go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let it go ahead. Oh, he's genius. Okay. Um, Is he happy with it? He's like your nan. Yeah, yeah. Is what do you make of uh, Michael Greco's character Beppe being axed from EastEnders? Uh. Whoa. Problem for you? Six thousand. The whole soap thing. What's it's back in Coronation Street, isn't she? What do you say? The whole soap. Problem for you? Oh, problem. The whole soap yeah. thing. What's it's back in Coronation Street, isn't she? Uh, what's her name? Who? Bat Lynn's. She yeah. thought she'd go off and be yeah. a bigger star. Yeah. yeah. All went wrong, and now she's oh, coming back. Yeah. yeah. Always happens, doesn't it? Happy will be back. Yeah. No one really cares. Sure, sure. Yeah. What was the final one? Van reply? That was the guy. The white van man says, uh, obviously they feel the character has run his course, but yeah. I think he's a pretty good actor and I can't understand why. So, I mean, obviously there's a, a white van man there who was also got an opinion on script the, development. The through line, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah like the the through line of soap opera. The, the, the 12 week narrative, the, the arc really showed it's itself up. The two, two last ones I want your opinion on here. Um, what do you make of a cat that's been cloned in a secret 2.5 million research project? To find whoa, out whoa, whoa, I thought the word of, okay, pet. I thought the first, okay, pet. Okay, okay, because the first clone ever was a sheep, was it not? But CC, that's so cute for carbon copy. I didn't know that copycat. Depending on who you asked, she was the world's first clone pet. As a lot of you may know, the government changed in Argentina a couple months ago technically last year, and the guy, the, the new president now, he has five dogs. They're not Great Danes, but they're basically Great Danes. There's this other brand of dogs that I can't think of, but it's basically the, the, the giant ones, like Mastiff, or I don't know. It's just, it's freaking Great Dane, okay? You see a picture, it's a Great Dane. He has five of them, and all five of them are clones of one he had, that he freaking just loved to death. And, um, I don't know if after a path, before a path, I don't know how that works, but he got it cloned five times, and now that that's his, those are his five pets, which is very interesting. And you know what's interesting about that? Other than a lot of things? <laughs> uh, they apparently, I've heard, I don't know, I haven't met them, but apparently they do not get along with each other, which is interesting because they're all like made from the same stuff. So I don't know. I don't know why. Like apparently he has to keep them all separate because they just can't stand each other. That's weird. I don't know. But that 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 that's the real. That's that's Cece. That that she she looks born. <laughs> she looks like a normal little kitty cat. Adorable. <sighs> 0.5 million research project. Sorry, what? Uh, the two, two last ones I want your opinion on here. Um, what do you make of a cat that's been cloned in a secret 2.5 million research project? To find out what? If what, they can clone, clone cats, yeah. Have they had to hurt it? Sorry? Have they had to sort of hurt it to do that? Have they had to hurt okay. it? Yeah, or is it just scraping its tongue for some stuff? I no. think the cat's fine. The point is that they're cloning a, a, another creature, which is potentially very dangerous. Have you seen that film where they bring Hitler back? <laughs> mm, that no. cat. What if that cat turned out to be a world dictator? Exactly. What do you that, reckon of no. cloning Picture. generally, Carl? You concerned about it? Brilliant. Well, I think they're cloning for organs. You know, they, they just grow them for the. You know. Do you know what cloning means? <laughs> yeah, it's when you like make something else. That's the same, isn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's not going to do any harm. Okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> That's great. and finally. <laughs> 22 years later, and I don't think it has done any harm, so. I'm not, you know, I'm not, like, in the topic or on the subject or I'm not on it. I haven't, like, the, the max I know about it is what I just told you about the guy's dogs. But, I mean, if it was dangerous or something bad happened, it would have made the news. And I've never heard of anything bad about it, so they can just clone pets. Very weird, though, but... Okay. World Council. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. And finally... Put you on the World Council. Yeah, yeah. Finally, yeah, uh, what yeah. do you make of some city workers who were caught bonking in the glass lifts of the Lloyds building? What do I make of it? Yeah. Is that a problem for you? Do you think that's unprofessional? Was it the lunch break or...? I think it was lunch break. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. Right. Is there own time? <laughs> I think fair enough. It only takes 45 seconds to go from the bottom to the top. Is that a problem? They moved quickly. They acted, you know, on instinct. Do you think fair enough? If, they, if that's their natural instincts and they're both consenting, you think fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much, Carl.
Thanks Carl. very much, Carl. Carl, Carl we'll have fans. more of uh, Carl's uh, world-weary opinions next time uh, on the show. Lisa, I want to play a track that I love. I, I, I can't wait for this track. It's, it's by a great band. Just going to do it before Steve does this. Uh, coming up, we're going to give away a great game. I've, um, well, I'm sort of clearing out my flat with Tony, and then we've got you know a lot of junk there. And uh, we're going to give away a great game coming up. You've seen it, Steve. You're excited. I'm looking forward to that. It's Look a board game. That. It's it? a board game that we're all going to sign. It's going to be signed by Jerv Smirch. KP the K man. From so you could win that. The classic album Copper Blue by Sugar. Listening to it again recently reminded how good it was. Yeah. This is the track Hoover Dam. Play it. Oh my god. White stripes. <laughs> Fell in love with a girl. Next then 104.9 is ten past two. Right, okay, that's the first hour out of the way. Next hour, Steve, I've got a game to give away. As I say, I'm sort of cleaning out my flat a little bit and uh, we we're gonna throw away stuff and I went I went say, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't throw that away. Yeah. I can give that away on the show because XFM don't give us anything to give away. No. Does anyone care what happens weekends? Dude, <laughs> dude, there was a this is episode twelve. I've seen at least maybe five where they gave stuff away. Mostly tickets, but I think all tickets? I did think it was going to be a weekly thing, though. I'm not going to lie. I did think it was going to be a thing that happened every week. I guess they got cheaper. I don't know what happened. There's people coming here going, oh, he hasn't turned up, fiddling with stuff, fire alarms going off, the library. But we were looking for a track we played a couple of weeks ago on the same album, and it's gone. Yeah, it's been pinched since we last played it. This is a... I can't believe it. They're moving... They're, that's a, like a tip out there. And I have to... Yeah. <laughs> no, it is a disgrace, Carl. It is. It is absolutely... It's disgusting. How many of the DJs on this station have won multiple awards like Ricky Gervais? Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd say yeah. Yeah. I'd love yeah. 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 <laughs> to have someone of my calibre. I hurt my ankle, didn't I, moving a chair. I had to even move my own chair in here, and I hit my ankle. That would teach me not to wear socks. Yeah. The socks would have just taken out the stain. I think, I think just walking around barefoot generally is kind of <laughs> London. You know, there's the needles, Rick, there's all sorts I of I know, or that, well, Posh does it in her video, she walks around barefoot. Oh, you love My it. heart's got a mind of its own. Ricky absolutely loves the current Victoria Beckham. Yeah, da -da 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 -da. I like the sentiment, my heart's got a mind of its own. It's like, doesn't matter what I'm thinking in my head, my heart says something else. Of course, what we did for the last week was change the lyric. Just walk around you know, for ages. Does anyone else do that? Just go, things like, um, things like, my wife's got a car car of her own. Uh, it's just, things like that and, uh, my, Seriously, hours of amusement doing that. <laughs> just changing it. Uh, 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 my, my knob's got, got some balls of its own. <laughs> We've been doing that for a week. Meant to be working. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, you were going to give away this game, Rick. Yeah, it's called Donuts. And it's a game for four players, or two to four Never players. Have you ever played it yourself? Um, I watched. We sort of got it for a party and I that watched some fantastic. people. Um, <laughs> Can I try and sell it to punters who may Yeah, go on. It? Play the part of a crazy donut-loving elephant in this hilarious game of fun and fast action. Yeah. You put on a little elephant thing and you have to pull up the ne get up the donuts. Brilliant. Can you be the first elephant to get all your donuts on your trunk? Be, f uh, be the first one. Uh, sorry, the first one is. Sorry, this isn't a sex game, by the way. There's no euphemisms there. Some of this is a bit slightly damaged. The packaging. That's why I couldn't read that. You're though. joking. Yeah, but don't worry, because you're not asking much for this, are you? <laughs> 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 we'll start at five pounds. Bear in uh, mind, it'll be signed by Double Award yeah, Ricky Ricky. No, of course it's free. And uh, um, Carl went. We got a question. I went. No, he said. Uh, well, something about the elephant man. I went, <laughs> something about the elephant. Yeah, man. and I went. Uh, yeah. You know, John Merrick, he went, yeah. He went, yeah, something about that. Awful, wasn't it? I went, you know where Michael Jackson actually bid for the skeleton of that? And uh, he went, really? what, would the skeleton be affected? I went, without well, it grows, it, that's what happens, it's nice. And he went, you don't see any of that about these days, do you? <laughs> I just said save it. Although, of course, you have to put on these masks when you play Donutters, so yeah. in a strange way, that looks kind of Merrick-esque. Yeah. Uh, go. And um, the game which I should just tell people listening is is elephantastic. It is. It, is. <laughs> it says that on the box. It so is I'm elephantastic. Right. It is elephantastic. I mean, you yourself. Can I say a question? Actually, this go is on. a possible question. Okay. Should we um, sign it first? We should sign it. But uh, yeah. based on the Elephant Man question, obviously, mm. um, we all know who directed the Elephant Man film. Sure. Don't sure. We? Mm. So yeah. Parker. No. David Lynch. Lynch, of course. Yeah. But uh, do you know who one of the um, the people that got that film made was? He's a very famous comedian. It was his production company that got it up, up and running. He may be an executive producer. I think he was even the producer of it. 
And no. uh, he's an American, famous American comic actor. You wouldn't imagine this was the same guy <coughs> who is also producing a very serious sober film like The Elephant Man, all right? We want to know who was that man. It's a bit hard for that. Well, yeah, but I mean, that'll, sort of, that'll separate you from that. the what chaff. You, I don't, oh. Have you seen anything else that's elephantastic? Not even Wellafant was Elephantastic. He was Wellafant. Rick, have you, have you got any more ta uh, memorabilia that you want to uh, give <laughs> yeah, to people? Maybe get rid of. Yeah. Because I have to say, I've got the loads council won't take it away. I've got loads of junk in my house. I've got an old fridge freezer in the front garden. Anyone's welcome to come and pick that up anytime. <laughs> I'll sign it for them. But what about children climbing in it? That's not one of those with the handles, is it? There's several children trapped in there. <laughs> 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 yeah. well, that's a sobering lesson. You know what? Council won't come and pick it up. It's um, a problem though, isn't it? Because you can't just smash it up. You're right. I don't no. know what you meant to do. Well, listen, right, when I was growing up, I remember the council um, used to charge five pounds or something to take away, like, cookers and fridges, so my dad used to bury them. Mm. Down the bottom of my garden, I don't know, th th there's, there's a cooker, there's a fridge, fr there's a freezer of some sort, there's a dog and a couple of cats, they were dead. I'm not saying, my, I mean, my father's quite a mean man, as you know, that, uh, yeah. that, but he, uh, my dad used to uh, do that with dead relatives. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. those funeral parties very, take the very piss. expensive. So, a, a, a funeral can be, you know, up to forty quid. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Whereas so, a shovel, a shovel borrowed yeah. off the bloke next door. Yeah, yeah, that's a and, massive saving. And not given back, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, he's going to go soon. <laughs> what's, what's, oh. what's he going to say? Okay, to win donuts signed by Mr. Ricky Gervais and two other blokes you've never heard of. It's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. And the question is, what was the famous name? The name of the famous comedian? Uh, American give up the number. Give up the number. That produced uh, and had heavy production involvement in the film The Elephant Man. The email address. Address is ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Carl, what's the uh, phone number? Oh, eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. Right, next up, we've had a lot of requests. Carl's popularity is growing. They want to hear his um his super mega. I'm sorry, I got stuck on the um dead relatives in the backyard. <sighs> First question that comes to mind is okay. This was we're talking about different times, but I mean, I guess now. First question is: Is that legal? Because <clears throat> there's a lot of laws about weird ass stuff, but and second of all, I just it's mm, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I would feel about having a backyard knowing like grandma's right down there. It's just mm, it's weird. It is weird. I am more, um, personally, I, I guess my family is more one of those, you know, cremate me type of families, uh, which is fine, makes sense. It's also odd sometimes when, it just, it's just the way humans deal with Especially, it's just different cultures because everybody does it differently. But the way humans generally deal with death of relatives or friends or loved ones or whatever, it's odd. Having an urn full of ashes of just anybody, and when they like put it on a mantle or above the fireplace, or, I just, it's, it's odd to me. What I do like personally is um, cremating a loved one and then scattering the ashes like at the beach or somewhere that person that was meaningful to that person or whatever that i get and i that I like I, I feel it's like poetic and nice and pretty and whatever but i don't know personally me when i go and it's super cool that it's starting to actually become a thing there's a lot of companies that are starting to do it and it's taken off so hopefully when i'm gone it'll like be more normal and just accessible and stuff like that I want to be made into compost. Put me under a tree or under a rose bush or whatever and let me feed the plants. That's what I want, right? And they're doing that now. That's cool. But it's not the same <laughs> as um, just, I, I, just grandma's right there and Uncle Ben is over there and just, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oof. Anyway. Just, I'm sorry. I got stuck on that and I had to share, but whatever. I compost me, please. Find a way. I mean, there should be a way. There's already a way, so I want that. Mix. Uh, the Brit is, um, is a <laughs> super mega mix. Uh, the Britney Spears thing. Big it up. Big it up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Big, what are we talking about, sir? Right, next up, we've had a lot of requests. Carl's popularity is growing. They want to hear his, um, his super mega mix. Uh, the Britney Spears thing. Big it up. Big it up. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, tell us what it is. It. All right. It's um, Mark being Blade, the vocals of the unknown over Britney Spears. Hit me, baby, one more time. Let's hear it. It's highly illegal. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So <laughs> Go on then, back announce it, Carl. It's yours. Go on. That's uh, Mark being played there with a bootleg. And what's it called? You called it something, haven't you? You cleverly called it something. What did you call it? Um. um <laughs> Nick this record one more time. Good. Yeah, Very good. Uh, Carl Perkin Pil Pilkington <laughs> there breaking all <laughs> kinds of copyright rules. Now. Coming up, we're going to be talking a little bit of feng shui, the art of moving things around so it's better. The ancient oriental art of rearranging your living room. Yeah, the, or <laughs> the ancient art of don't sit near a window. <laughs> exactly. Because you won't get any money for it. <laughs> And we've got a, we've got a book. Well, we've uh, been exploring feng shui for our yeah, amusement. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be reading some uh, great things. This is just uh, good. It's good, solid feng shui advice for us. I mean, what do we need to know? I mean, just keep those questions coming to us. If you've got any question for Carl, don't forget that's an ongoing thing. Anything, anything in the world, Love any it. question, personal problems, philosophies, online, it can be out of the. Just ask Carl if you want. You know, just ask Carl. Okay. All right, Carl, you up for that, aren't you? Yeah. That's and nice. you give your honest opinion, won't you? Always. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Should yep. we give away uh, donuts? Oh, we, it's, it's, it's been won. Who's won it, Carl? Scott um, Hammond. Scott well, well done. Well done, yeah. Scott. He'll be loving that. He's, he's probably going to have a party, especially to play donuts. We've yes. had uh, a number of right answers, but I'm afraid Scott's the winner. And the question, of course, was uh, which famous American comedian was heavily involved in the production of the film The Elephant Man? It was, of course, Mel Brooks. Surprising. Okay. And uh, he's got a company called Brooks Films. Our first, uh, first person that called in. I think he was a bit confused. He said, is it testicle, testicles? Yeah. Love me yeah. on what? The producer went, testicles. Yeah. What was that illness years ago? <laughs> right? There was um, a couple of lads at our school. Oh, yeah. Had really big heads. <laughs> right. And webbed fingers. And webbed fingers? And <laughs> Sorry, wait, wait, wait. Were that? Hold on, did you find him in a pond? Did they used to be little tadpoles? No, Carl, so you're not it. confusing your past with an old episode no, of Doctor no. Who, are you? <laughs> What were they called, these two? <laughs> the, oh, I, can't, I didn't mix with them. Right. Uh, no, it was just like... Of course it, not. Th there was a... Nobody thought anything of it at school. Cause no, it was like, sure. You used to it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! It was... It's the North. There, there goes the creature from the Black Lagoon again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He is like, brilliant at trigonometry. He's late for double maths. Yeah. But, um... Double maths. Yeah, I, I didn't think anything what of it. What is it called? What is the disease called where two fellas... Are they... Not even related. Rubbish. Oh, not related. There's, were you near a, a nuclear power station when you were growing up? Yeah. You weren't really. Yeah. <laughs> this has got oh, a bit I heavy. That's it. Hey, talking of uh, enormous heads, yeah. you were at the uh, the Pop Idol final, weren't you, Rick? You went yeah. in there just because obviously Rick's a huge fan of Pop Idol. He wanted to be there. He wanted yeah. to give his support. Quite seriously, there was no irony there. We were yeah, he genuinely is a fan of it. And um, he was. Uh, you, you you sort of had photos taken with various people. Yeah, didn't of course. You? you were a bit drunk and you wanted to have a yeah. memento. It. It's obviously yeah. a picture of you with uh, Fat Man Rick Waller. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the best one is a picture of Ricky and his girlfriend with Dr. Fox, yeah. whose head <laughs> is twice is the size of mine. Of any other head. It's quite remarkable. I he's don't know how they make it. He's a lovely bloke, and he was really nice to meet him and everything. But in the and he's, he's got, he looks like an immaculate tan, and he's always happy, and he's, you know, he's It looks really on the picture, it looks like someone you might see in a carnival who's built a huge papier-mâché head. <laughs> and he's yeah. just, like Frank Sidebottom, <laughs> just sort of walking down the road. It's just incredible. Dog. You know what always tripped me out? Every time I would watch Friends and there would be a scene with Phoebe and Mike, Paul Rudd's head is twice the size of Lisa Kudrow's, especially like with his hair in that show where it was, it was kind of like all just like messy and fluffed about. Um, every time, especially when they're on the couch, like in the cafe, just just when when they're looking at each other and you just like if you compare, it's it's amazing. That always tripped me out a lot because. Like, you look at Paul Rudd and you don't think, oh my god, that guy has a giant head. Like, what's wrong with him? He's a lollipop. No, but I mean, when you, when they're just there, I, that, I was like, I was always shocked at the difference of it. Very weird stuff. Dr. Fox didn't used to go to your school, did he? He used to hang around with a mate. They were great swimmers. <laughs> they were brilliant swimmers. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> Have we got another song lined up? Yeah, yeah. what are we going to play? Bit of For a Monch. Bit mm -hmm. of who? For a Monch. Let's hear it. <laughs> okay. 
Farmanch, got ya. XFM 104.9. Well, as we promised, some Feng Shui. Um, what do you want to know? Ratio of windows. It's, a, it's a li one of those little books that you see at the sort of like the front desk of like Waterstones or Dillon's mm. or one of those. And it's just, uh, it's a little guide. It's, um, uh, should I say what it is? I'm allowed, yeah, I'm allowed, aren't I? Well. Lillian Two's little book of um, Feng Shui. And, uh, obviously, she can't go into it in depth, but it's some little. You know. Just some little sort of nuggets, I suppose. Yeah, ratio of windows. The <laughs> ratio of windows. Just some little sort of nuggets, I suppose. Yeah, ratio of windows. The ratio of windows to doors in your rooms should not exceed three to one. Too many windows calls all your luck to seep away. <laughs> Obviously. Hello. <laughs> uh, it is also better not to have windows on the wall opposite the door. Is that the case in your place, uh, Carl? Because you may need, may need to brick that up when you get back later. <laughs> I always remember, um, I used to work nights. Yeah. Right. And it was when my brother just sort of got kicked out of the army. Yeah. I mean, mum and dad went away on holiday, so he was staying with us. He's got to write a book, this bloke. And, you have um, got to write a book, Carl. Go on. He came back. He has. Yeah. And there was women everywhere. Several. There's women in every bed in the house. I thought, where am I going to sleep? Had he set up a brothel? What? So, no, he's just a bit of a, bit of a womp. That's so, impressive, though, a girl in every single bed. I, I mean. He was mad. So, um, I slept on the sofa downstairs. Mm. And I didn't sleep that well. Yeah. But I slept on it before when it was facing a different way. Sure. And I had a good sleep. <laughs> so for you, that's so, proved the worth of Feng Shui. Yeah, I think there's something in it. <laughs> Did you honestly think there's something in it, though? Yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, we'll just read a few of the others, Rick. Okay, well, it's yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is not. I think, I think most people know this one. Uh, display a three legged frog for luck. Um, look for a three legged frog. You can buy one from any Chinese supermarket <laughs> uh, and place it in the vicinity of your front door, Didn't facing inwards as if it has just come into the house. Don't place the frog facing the door! <laughs> Please! Oh, come on, people! What Think you... before you place your frog. I mean, this... this really is... I mean, but... but... What's the last page? Because that will be the most important one, won't Do you reckon? Yeah. The last one, I... I, I uh, the wealth vase. Make a wealth vase and keep it hidden in your cupboard. It can be made of gold, crystal, or glass. If I, can I just say something? If you've got a vase made of gold, you're probably all right for money anyway. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. sure. But yeah. this is the wealth vase. How do you make the wealth vase? Fill it with semi-precious stones and with soil taken from a rich man's garden. So just find the soil of a rich man. <laughs> Take some soil from the <laughs> This is like bury a piece of steak and the wart will go. Yes. I, I, I have a uh, tooth of frog. This is. It's the one there with the gods. Can you find that one? Oh, where's that one? Yeah. Do you, do you, what, do you, what do you make of Feng Shui, Carl? I is it something you believe in? Uh, well, like I said, I didn't sleep well on the sofa when it so was. So for you, that's proof, proof, proof positive. Yeah, you've got to get it right, haven't you? <laughs> um, I'd like Carl to read this out. Okay. Yeah, do you, do you mind? Read it out. Just read it out loud. Which, Which one? one? Yeah, the gods are here, right? Right, okay. Just read that, that's such a, a good bit the gods yeah. of wealth into your home. Yeah. The Chinese have several gods of wealth. Yeah. Which they display in their homes to attract, what? Prosperity. Prosperity. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My personal favourite is T.C.S.G. Yi. Yeah. Who sits on a tiger. He sits on a tiger? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wait. It's pretty difficult to find this, this fella. Yeah. If you could use Kan Kung. Or the three star gods. Oh, no. Wait. Read them out! Read out the names of the star gods. F U K. <laughs> read well, it out! Just read that! It's, a, it's a, a Chinese god! god. You're allowed Chinese to say god. Chinese god no. for the radio. No. You are allowed to no. say. What you're allowed to say? You say it then. Well, it, it, you. Look, it's, oh, you're so immature. Read the three of them out, really. Okay. Um, if he is difficult to find, you should use Quan Kung or the three star gods, Fuck Luck and Sal, all of whom bring wealth and prosperity. Then what were the But his, he said his had a K, and he just said, fuck, luck, and chow, so. All right. Happiness, sure, longevity. You know what that reminded me of? Hold on, I'm not done reading. <laughs> I can't read and speak. Okay, you know what that reminded me of in um, Austin Powers? I can't remember which one, but when he meets the twins, and one is called Fook Me, and the other is called Fook You. <laughs> That was a great scene. Names of the gods again? Because I just, I'm, if I'm making a note at home, Rick, it's, it's just, it's a Chinese god. Yeah, it's this Quan Kun, or you can use Luk Sao. Or... <coughs> you can't. What? But it's a god, F U K. It's, 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 it's... Yeah, I assume. I don't know if we're, if we're pronouncing it wrong. I really apologise. Apologies, apologies if, if we're offending anyone who's uh, of an Oriental persuasion. But that's Quan Kun or Luk Sao or fuck. And any of those gods are available at a Chinese supermarket. <laughs> Near you? Yeah.
That's Feng Shui. I'm pretty feng sure it's Fu, oh, though. Give me that look. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember the last one. No. I could be wrong, though. Obviously. I am, usually. Clinic. Walking with thee. Um, so there, that's uh, Feng Shui. That's we've, Feng Shui sorting. We've given away donuts. We've talked a little bit about um, today was a band big day. names today. We've uh, more insight into Carl's psyche. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Now you you uh, during that record you said, uh, "Are we knock everything?" Mm. You saw something about the Bermuda Triangle, didn't you? That yeah. When I talked about ghosts, you sort of just. Uh, because you don't believe in it. Mm. You, I think it's because you're scared of it, to be honest, and you can't admit to, to understanding it and sure. actually believing in it. Sure. Thing on last night, Steve. Yes. Bermuda Triangle. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Do you know much about that? Um, mainly the uh, song. I yeah. learned all about that. What's his name? Bermuda, um, Bermuda Triangle, Triangle, where people no, disappear. No, Bermuda the Triangle. What's his name? No, Barry Manilow. Barry, Barry Manilow. Yeah. Are you familiar with the lyrics? Bermuda Triangle, where people disappear. Bermuda Triangle, don't go near. Yeah. I shouldn't really make a joke out of it. No, you're right. Go on. But um, what it is, right, there's a program saying what it what it's about. Do you, I mean, what do you know about it? Uh, as I say, mainly from what Barry's told me, but uh, certainly playing. I know Wednesday Adams is obsessed with it. Bermuda Triangle sustains heavy daily traffic, both by sea and by air. It is one of the most heavily traveled shipping lanes in the world, then, then I think we're good. It is subject to frequent tropical storms and hurricanes. In 2013, the World Wildlife Fund, huh, WWF, is that, it, was that why it had to be WWE later, the WWF? Because it was, because it was, the letters were used for something more important. Sorry. Conducted an exhaustive study of maritime, I don't know if I said that right. Shipping lanes and determined that the Bermuda Triangle is not one of the world's ten most dangerous bodies of water and shipping. Planes and various boats have gone missing within the Bermuda Triangle. Planes. Yeah. Yep. But obviously that documentary didn't explore. He, it. He, he learned a lot about that. For that. I, I learned a lot about American history through "We Didn't Start the Fire" by Billy Joel. <laughs> Again, most <laughs> of my knowledge of um, the uh, sort of you know, czarist Russia comes from uh, R- Rasputin, Rasputin like by um, Boney M. Well, yeah. <laughs> he was the lover of the Russian queen. They put you know, poison into his wine. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They shot him till he was dead. Yeah. Which is, you know, go on. Right. Well, this, oh, those right. Russians. Sort of, uh, bit of a bit of an earthquake in the sea. Sure. Let's out methane gas. Okay. Yeah. And apparently, if methane gas, if you were swimming out in the sea, yeah, and there was like a, an earthquake and some methane came out, yes. you can't swim in it. You just sink. Okay. Even if you're a good swimmer. What What, what happens if you're, you're two lads from your school? And they, re- Heads. yeah, that, that, that's that's a that's like a buoy. Doesn't so you can see them a mile off, no, no, and no. their webbed hands would get them into shore. Because they did actually say, even if you were in a life jacket, if if the water's full of methane, right, you methane, just sink. You just sink. So what it's saying is, boats have gone across the sea, mm. got a load of methane in the sea, and the boat just sinks. Right. What about the planes? Is it then sort of planes with little sort of floaty things? Could on? be. That's that. That'll be the sort they've landed in the sea. Right. And methane's coming. Well, sorry, Carl. What did the documentary say? Not, not I imagine. Yeah, your hypothesis might be. Yeah. Working. What well, did they, they sound like? They didn't cover they, that bit. They didn't, didn't cover the planes. planes. They didn't do the planes. Something else they said about it though. Go on. Loch Ness, mm-hmm. the monster. Yep. Sure. Probably doesn't exist. Okay. What oh. it is? Interesting. Hold on. Interesting. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. That, what they thought? It, not this probably didn't exist. Curious viewpoint. Hold on. What, what proof have they got for that, Carl? How can they go around saying stupid things like that? <laughs> it's methane. Right. Again, in Loch Ness. And people have seen, um, what's the, what's the lake it's in? Loch Ness. Loch Ness. <laughs> yeah. That's so cute! Um, it being things. the Loch Ness monster. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. where it lives. That's, that's how it finds its way home. That's certainly the, the clue. Yeah, if, 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 <laughs> if you get it again, Carl, yeah. that's the clue. Yeah, if you go, and it's, the, and if it's out uh, uh, wandering, it <laughs> excuse me, uh, uh, would you know where uh, I'm being the Loch Ness monster, where, where would I be going? <laughs> oh, you'd be going to the Loch Ness if that's your home. It's way over there, you so big anyway, monster, you. So the bubbles from the sure. methane, Mm. Bubble up out of the water. Yeah, and people yeah. think, oh god, it's a monster's head. But it's not. It's just water sort of shooting up because of the bubbles. Well, that's two of the great mysteries of the universe solved by mm-hmm. Carl P on a, on a Saturday afternoon. That is wow. fantastic. That is fantastic. So that makes me that makes me think a lot of things. So you know, when mediums are sort of like going, oh, I've got something coming through. Mm. Do you think they are uh, exhaling a lot of methane gas, and thus thus making them not think straight? Do you think everything's down to methane gas? Do you think that all the mysteries of the universe are down to methane gas, Carl? 
What did it say in the documentary you saw? About what? What was the budgie happy? We know that budgie was sad. Was it- was it in a room- Cause they used to take canaries down the mines, didn't they? They used to take canaries down the mines, they'd smell the methane, and then the budgie would be happy. She's I'm just not gonna having teach a laugh. Anymore. Aww. Play a record. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she <laughs> she, she said, she didn't. <laughs> oh, I love how ready he is for that. Mode. Smooth. <laughs> 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 are we getting paid for this? I bet they are. Our Freaks Electric, Richard X and the Sugar Babes mm -hmm. on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly through, we've had a few laughs again, yep. a few tears. Absolutely, as always. Few, uh, oh, oh, excuse me, and don't, don't be alarmed, I, I look quite frightening, but uh, merely a Oh my nice god, he sounds like Eddie Izzard! I look quite frightening, but uh, merely a, a nice monster. I seem to- Oh, I can't remember if it was- That just brought me, I guess, dressed to kill. Or glorious, because sometimes he does that kind of voicey thing. Oh! <laughs> she, sorry. Two lost my way home. Uh, could you direct me in the right direction? Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, call me. Hi. Um, what's your name? W why do you need to know my name? Well, it might help me to find out where you come from. Oh, my name's the Loch Ness monster. Okay, all right. Give me a second. Um, what was your name again? Loch Ness monster. See, this is what I mean. When you, <laughs> when you came in, you're all over me, like a rash. Oh. Being nasty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Guess towards the end. It's the phone. Answer it. See who it is. Can you give us a second, uh, listeners? Just amuse yourselves for a moment. Yeah. We're who just is speaking it? to uh, Carl's just on the phone there, speaking to someone. Um, we'll just uh, keep you abreast of who that is. Uh, who kind is of time. It? It's uh, ten to three. So just a private call now. Um, uh, can he mute his mic? Uh, I am, yeah. But I, but I don't want to say, say it now. I, I've, on television. Uh, well, I, well, I've uh, got David Brent one person in the hits it from the office and uh, often performs live at uh, different <laughs> venues <laughs> around <laughs> yeah. the country. Um, uh, okay. So while those two take care of business, <laughs> all right, guys, have you finished that private call? Jeez, oh, <laughs> that was outrageous. Um, you know you're a fan of Feng Shui, Carl, and you believe it's all true. <laughs> Um, I just, I just run this one past you just on the off chance. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it may be that you try to change your opinion slightly. Yeah. Feng Shui teaches you to use your environment wisely. Sure. If your land and the surrounding area is undulating, it's said to house auspicious dragons. <laughs> when land is flat and featureless, the dragon is missing and the land is said to be less That's auspicious. That's an amazing image. Excuse me, they call me the, uh, uh Brixton Dragon. Sure, sure. Uh, I seem to have lost my way. I, I know it's South London somewhere, but, uh, uh could you help me? Find my home. What's it, what, 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 what's your name? Well, they call me the Brixton Dragon. Uh, right, where are you from? Uh, <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> oh, I uh, see what you mean, I. Oh, the came So, is that, does that, does that make you query at all, the dragon? I'm the, not into the, it that much. Right, I'm sure. I'm just saying that if you have your head at one end of the bed rather than the other, it might make a difference to your night's yeah. sleep. It's not so much sure. feng shui, though, is it, as sort of good advice, hmm. generally. When you went it's home. Like, don't, don't, don't sleep on the end of a spike near a cliff. Good advice. I mean, that, that's good advice, isn't it? You know what I mean? No. When you went home and uh, the house was full of women, <laughs> why did you why did you sleep on the sofa? Why did you not pop upstairs and sort of <sighs> into a warm bed? Yeah, with a, with a, with a woman. <laughs> 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 were, were they dressed or? Is your brother still sort of have those kind of parties or? I haven't seen him for years. Sure, sure, sure. Where's he living there? I don't know. Okay. What's, What's his name? Mark. <laughs> it's not. He's not. He's not known as like Moss Side Mark. Because that could or, be a clue. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> ten Dawlish Road Mark. He's never out of prison long enough to get a nickname. Hey, really? Steady on. It's getting a bit heavy, isn't it? Oh, God. Is this is this what's motivated a lot of your anxiety? Yeah. Oh, the hair loss, that sort of thing. We always go a little bit too far, don't we? They're a bit dark at the end of the show. I know. Well, it's, um. Oh. Wow. Well, sorry about that. for Pete. Oh, Pete wanting a little bit of muse. Yeah, if Pete wants it. I mean, I don't. I'm not a big fan. I don't mind Muse. I, I, I've still not got over them them doing that um, summertime song. What was it called? Nina Simone cover, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, listen. Let's not bring the show down. Uh, no. Let's play Muse, and then we'll be pretty much South Kensington. Yeah. Plug in, baby. Let's enjoy. What? Oh! I thought they were gonna keep going. All right. Awesome. <sighs> I am late for work. <laughs> Anyway, that was an excellent episode. That was super fun. Um, I love it. And I like hearing Mr. Pilkington, I guess the words stand up for himself. 
I like that he's saying, hey, you're bullying me. Hey, you're going too far. Hey, you're not treating me great. Hey, you know, you guys are being mean. Because that, that just, just, I, I feel like that's enough to keep Ricky at bay enough to not turn him so much into Robert Ince or the Nigel guy or just that level of Ricky crazy. Um, just, you know, acknowledging it. Hey, no, you bully me. I don't like it. Not cool. And uh, I like that. I like that he, 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 he does that. In, in like the softest way possible too. It's just so cute. But oh my God, I love I love Carl. And I love that when they're just talking about stuff and they're just like Ricky and Carl just riffing off each other and stuff in the background. <laughs> Steven's always like, sure, sure. Yeah, yep, sure. <laughs> just kind of like to get through it so he can start talking about something else. <laughs> I love it. These guys are hilarious. And this might have been out of the 12 I've seen, probably one of the at least one of the funnest so far. This is extremely fun. I like these guys a lot. And I'm late for work, so I gotta go. Thank you for everything. You guys are amazing. I will be back next week for normal scheduled mendiness. But I had to get this done. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have been fantastic. Thank you so much. I mean, with these three people talking about stupid stuff, I, I, I can't imagine you not enjoying. If you don't enjoy me, you wouldn't, you're, you're not here anymore. You would have left, which would make sense because I don't get when people get to like the end of a video, they watch the whole thing and then they complain. If you don't like it, you can leave, you know? It's just like... Anyway, um, long story short, thank you. You guys are awesome. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.